Hello everybody. Welcome to this video on Edwardian era. Now this is the first video on 20th century that we are having. Until now we were listening to uh, literature, authors works of the previous centuries up to the end of the 19th century we have covered. Before I talk about the first period Edwardian period, I want to give you a brief overview of uh, the 19th century and how changes happened at the end of the 19th century leading to the big uh, momentous events of the early 20th century. Are you ready for that? Remember in the 16th century there was a start of renaissance. Renaissance started with humanism and reformation. The centrality of the human being, meaning is invested with the human being or author. Human being's emotions are valuable. That is humanism, isn't it? And from the Renaissance, humanism continued. In the 17th century, there was rationalism. And many big changes happened in the 17th century like the English Civil War and later restoration, new experiments, new styles of writing emerged and all this is part of humanism, liberal humanism we say. In the 18th century there was the Augustan age or the neoclassical period followed by the coming of romanticism. Augustan age gave importance to reason, romanticism gave importance to emotion and imagination. Both these are humanist. And in the 19th century, there was a reaction against industrialization. There was a longing for rural lives. There was a valorization of common man and his experiences. And romanticism flourished. Romanticism gave way to Victorian period. The Victorian period is the point of high colonialism. There was high colonialism, imperialism in the Victorian period. England was at the height of its power but at the same time there were also changes. Reality was shaken by events like Darwin's publication of Origin of Species. When Charles Darwin published Origin of Species there was a questioning of religion, a questioning of the Bible, a questioning of Christianity that resulted from it. There was the Victorian dilemma. And people did not know whether to believe in religion or science, whether to believe in the rural values or the new urban values, whether to welcome democracy, people wanted voting rights, democracy was coming, people were confused. Realism was a movement at this time, but at the same time, realism was subverted or weakened by avant-garde movements, by new experimental movements in art and literature. The end of the 19th century is the time of decadence, moral decadence, aesthetic turn, we call it aesthetic turn means a new importance given to aesthetics or beauty over morality. Morality is no longer important, religion and science are no longer important, religion, science, uh, philosophy, etc. are all, uh, you know, so, sidelined and more importance given to poetry. This is called aesthetic turn. They were so confused about society, they were confused about religion, philosophy, science, etc. Many people focused only on poetry and many of them were avant-garde writers and artists. So this is the confusing period at the end of the 19th century. In the early 20th century, we see the death of Queen Victoria. And now I will give you a quick overview of the 20th century. And then I will come to uh, details of the first period, which is the Edwardian period. Now I am going to give you an overview of the 20th century. All right. 20th century began with the death of Queen Victoria in 1901. And after that, Edward the seventh ruled, that is Edwardian period. Edwardian period was a time in which there were upper classes and 
aristocracy on the one hand there were also lower classes also becoming powerful at the on the other hand the edwardian period is followed by the georgian period the georgian period is the time of george the 5th it was also a time of confusions ordinary people uh, and upper class people clashing traditional poets and modernists both were writing at this time and the georgian period witnessed the first world war wow it was considered to be the war that will end all wars not at all it was only the beginning and the georgian period is up to the second world war and after the second world war we have the post war period so what happened in the georgian period it was a pretty long time in the georgian period first we have the modernists in the 1920s in the 1930s we have the late modernists like w h auden there were also prose and no uh, prose writers and novelists like um, somerset maugham or aldous huxley graham green and then in the 1940s we have in poetry dylan thomas they he is a post war poet because 1940s in 1945 second world war ended and in the 1950s in the post war period we have angry young man movement in drama and novel at the same time in the 1950s there was the movement poetry of philip larkin and in the 1960s there were momentous changes in usa france england it was a time of great revolutions youth movements <coughs> subculture and counterculture movements the birth of literary theory at the same time there was new left and culture studies came uh, coming into being feminism all these things happened in the 1960s there was also the coming of a television age and slowly the dawn of a digital age from the 1960s we can say we have post modernism post modernism is a very diverse movement with lots of different different styles and genres writers post modernism is a big confusion so to say and ultimately literature itself becomes slowly sidelined to accommodate visual culture visual media digital age has dawned cybernetics so in a nutshell this is the progression of the 20th century now we will have a more detailed look of the edwardian era so once again the edwardian era is from 1901 that is when queen victoria died up to 1914 that is when the first world war started first world war is from 1914 to 18 second world war is 1939 to 45 the edwardian era was a time of great social changes so many things happened the british empire is still continuing but at the same time there are you know revolts against the empire in 1857 for example there was the first war of independence in india and from that time many countries many colonies were attempting to get freedom so there is a confused reaction to the empire many people wrote about the empire in the edwardian period like e m foster or joseph conrad but like you see in heart of darkness there is an ambivalent or ambiguous approach to the empire a criticism of imperialism is implicit the class system in england was very rigid and strong at this time many writers like arnold bennett john galsworthy etc wrote about the class system at this time even though upper class values and attitudes were predominant there were also liberal socialist ideas coming into being 
you know george bernard shaw was also writing at this time even though he was not a, an edwardian writer fabian socialism and such movements existed at this time socialism was a big attraction very soon the governments of us and uk will start looking down upon the socialists they will become suspicious of the socialists so it was generally a confused period have you read agatha christie agatha christie's novels you will see a lot of her novels set in this period early 20th century you can see the upper classes and their culture their leisurely parties and um leisurely life conflicting with the, the lower classes that is something that forms very uh, an interesting backdrop in agatha christie's mystery novels please guys let me at this point remind you to do a lot of original reading if you read a lot of novels automatically your study of english literature passing exams will become much easier original reading will give us a taste of the style of the author we will understand about history we'll understand uh, how to read literature we'll understand the intricacies of language so much more if you read original texts on your own every day guys spend some time ideally before you go to sleep to read original novels poems and plays make it a habit you know why because if before you go to sleep if you do it you will have a more peaceful sleep avoid a screen avoid uh, looking at the phone just before you sleep probably instead of that look at books read them so that these characters will be there in your mind as you sleep and th this will be a very deep enriching experience will you do that please try and if you do original reading i'm telling you all these things that i'm saying will make much more sense you will easily understand many times we struggle to understand because we don't have that first hand experience reading original text and doing some research on your own searching for information on your own both these are extremely important you know what my dream is let me tell you just half a minute more of uh, you want uh, to hear about my dream please let me tell you my dream i think i've shared with you before is that all the people in the world from uk us etc everywhere australia they should come to india to study english literature because you people are absolutely awesome scholars and teachers you will inspire them you will teach them in a very passionate manner wouldn't that be awesome guys let us make it true just reading on your own is enough okay so now you are thinking what about edwardian period i am waiting to hear about that okay edwardian period i was telling you is a confused period there are very upper class aristocratic people on the one hand lower class people social class is a theme in arnold bennett john galsworthy etc it is very important to know about the society of that time in order to understand literature edwardian society was a society that had an enthusiasm for art and fashions edwardian people enjoyed great art you can see such connoisseurs of art in edwardian literature i am reminded of portrait of a lady even though it is a little before edwardian literature that culture of gilbert osmond is continuing in this age women uh, had developed into new women many women of the victorian period abandoned the corset the uncomfortable clothes the corset and the hoop they began to dress in more comfortable clothes they began to ride bicycles they began going to uh, schools and colleges and started taking up jobs new woman is a woman who rejects conventions of the conservative society and lives like a man so this is a time when new women emerged the british empire is at its peak a lot of people are working in the british empire and also writing about it and it is a time when experimentation was there in art there is art nouveau art nouveau is a kind of new experimental art 
that drew inspiration from decadence of the earlier age and it inspired modernism art novu was a great inspiration on modernist art realism still flourished realism was introduced on stage by henry ibsen and in england at this time in the edwardian period ibsen was a great influence writers like henry james and wb sorry writers like henry james and gb shaw were inspired by ibsen as you know there were numerous realists who were employing realism edwardian realism is a term joseph conrad a g wells rudyard kipling john galsworthy arnold bennett e m foster so many major writers belonged to the edwardian period and slowly the distinction between high art and popular art is becoming pronounced in another 30 40 years popular art will become accepted as equal to high art in cultural studies popular art is going to be accepted but now the high and the low are two separate compartments now there will be separate videos on all the edwardian writers but after having heard all this introduction you might be enthusiastic to know a little more about the writers so let me introduce them joseph conrad for example is a major writer born in 1857 and he started writing in the edwardian period he was actually polish but he wrote in english and he was a po uh, he, and he was a novelist who showed early modernist motifs and also he was a novelist of the empire he wrote a lot about east west encounter he depicted characters who are trembling on the brink of moral panic to quote they are people who are facing guilt they are facing the consequences of their actions and they are doing things that have momentous significance in their lives like for example lord jim deserted his ship marlow took that journey to congo these are all life changing incidents for the characters deeply drawn characters and race relations that is a very important feature of joseph conrad's novels and joseph conrad also uh wrote about morality and existential themes a lot as you know he is also a very poetic novelist It is beautiful to read Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. I'm sure he, you have read it. It's just a small novel. He writes in a very poetic prose. And after Joseph Conrad, the next important writer is Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling, you probably already know, was the first Nobel laureate in English. He won the Nobel Prize in 1907. And he was also a poet and writer of the empire. he wrote short stories novels poetry and he wrote a lot about india and the british raj his most famous novel is of course jungle book but we have to know about kim also an irish orphan in lahore that is a story of kim i'm not going into the details because we will have separate videos detailed videos on these writers then we have hg wells All of us know that H G Wells was a science fiction writer but he was also a social novelist he also depicted society and a even new woman novel he has written and veronica H G Wells's novels are very popular wonderful to read but at the same time they provide us cross sections of the society the class divide that i talked about is very much seen in hg wells talk about class divide upper class versus lower class themes john galsworthy is one novelist and playwright you can't avoid mentioning in this context john galsworthy has written social realism depicting the society in uh, his plays starting from the silver box 
He has written very major plays like Justice and Strife. We will deal with them in detail later. And also novels like the Roman Flu. That means novel series called the Fawcett Saga. The Fawcett Saga is not the only novel series that he has written. There are more. If you know, type in the chat box. Otherwise, wait for the upcoming videos. Then there is Arnold Bennett. He lived in Stoke-on-Trent or Potteries or Five Towns and he wrote about them. He wrote novels like the Clay Hanger trilogy. He was also a playwright. He has written plays like Milestones. Another Edwardian realist is Ford Maddox Ford. Have you heard of him? Ford Maddox Ford was an early modernist who inspired even Ezra Pound. And then E. M. Foster. We all know his passage to India. E. M. Foster has written many other novels, some of them set in Italy, some of them in England. Where Angels Fear to Tread, A Room with a View, Howard's End, these are very major novels. Where he shows the irreconcilability of East and West cultures. Irreconcilability means they cannot be brought together. They are different. Like Rudyard Kipling said, East is East and West is West. Never the twain shall meet. So that is the theme of E.M. Foster's novels. E.M. Foster's novels are set in city of London beset with telegram and social changes and how characters are trying to belong to that city. Do they really belong? Is there any connection between characters that remain? That is a major theme in E.M. Foster's novels. In this Edwardian period, there were also writers like Saki, the short story writer. Do you know him? H. H. Munro, Hector Hugh Munro. G. K. Chesterton, do you know him? He was a prose writer as well as a novelist. He has created the detective Father Brown. So these are the major writers of the Edwardian period. In the Edwardian period, once again, there was realism, class issues, society was undergoing changes. The First World War is about to begin. So watch out for the upcoming videos on the Edwardian writers. I hope you will also do your reading. Bye-bye. Happy, happy studying.